you remember the red ads in Ocarina of Time? <laughs> And the crazy piano on Mario 64. Yeah. And the music in Lavender Town on Pokemon Red and Blue. Do you think Nintendo will do something like the battle against Gaigas in Earthbound? Nowadays? That's what we are going to talk about today. Everyone knows that Nintendo is a family-friendly company through and through. However, in many instances, they aren't scared of being spooky. A lot of crazy and unexpected moments can be found on old Nintendo games. Some of them are very intentional, others might be a result of primitive technology. 64 graphics didn't do any favors to Majora's Mask. But with the passage of years, Nintendo has changed a lot, and our perception as a society has also changed. And let's remember that Nintendo is always in the fight to keep those ASRB ratings in check. With all of that in mind, can Nintendo still be spooky, scary, unnerving? In my opinion, to put some scary elements in an everyone's product is a natural thing. After all, kids love Halloween. But there's a line that separates fun, spooky moments from really strange and scary moments. And it's really cool to see those moments that cross that line in Nintendo games. However, I think more and more Nintendo is relying on the cartoonish side of things. We can clearly see that in Luigi's Mansion series. But don't get me wrong, the first game was already cartoonish on the GameCube, but at the same time it was bringing some elements from horror movies to a kid's game. The eerie sound design with almost no soundtrack while exploring the mansion created this vibe that something could happen at any moment, similar to early Resident Evil games. Some of the portrait ghosts are also creepy. They have a good amount of characterization and actually feel like horror movie characters. Those elements are way more scarce on the two more recent installments. Uh, both of them are way more cartoonish with some exaggerated animations focused on humor, which isn't a problem in itself, but it definitely is a different vibe. I get a feeling that in the past, with fewer people involved in the development of the game, some of those crazy things were easier to appear in the final game. Now, everything is done in a careful manner with a lot of thought given to each decision. Some small crazy elements still can slip through, like the zombie costume on Super Mario Odyssey. It's really strange because I'm sure that they crossed the line here, but it is really fun to see that. Now, Imagine that you are playing your fun new Super Mario game, and when you enter a room, the character known as Bohemoth in New Super Mario Bros. 2 is only scary in the first seconds. But seriously, look at his face. Someone had a lot of fun designing it. It's a really cool twist on the classic Boo design that nowadays is far from terrifying, to be honest. I was impressed when I saw that in a game from the new series, which is usually conservative on the character design department. And all the animations that he does are very fun. The Boo houses have always been a nice source for some strange moments. I hated the ones on Super Mario World when I was a kid, because I would frequently get lost in some crazy loops, but now I really I appreciate the atmosphere that it is created, and I can't deny that it was immersive. More recently, Nintendo has made those levels less disorienting, but something that really caught my attention on Super Mario 3D World was the music choice for the Boo House. Give it a listen. It's one of my favorite pieces of music from the Super Mario 3D World, 
and I really like how overly dramatic it is. Aside from Mario, I know that Kirby also goes unexpectedly hard on some later bosses in each game. I'm not a big Kirby guy, but if you are a fan, please give us some examples in the comments. Now, of course, when Nintendo is developing a more mature series, they seem to be okay with some moments that definitely cross the line. The Metroid series is a good example of a really different Nintendo franchise. Fusion, in particular, was especially scary with the whole SAX situation. Imagine how creepy it would be to have an exact clone of you trying to kill you. What? In the recent Metroid Dread, we saw that Nintendo still has no problems at all with stalking in the series. Although I think the Emu robots are less scary than the SAX, because they are limited to specific areas in the map, so I'm always aware of when they will show up. But in general, I can say for sure that Dread is a very dark game. On the topic of stalking, the Silent Realms on Skyward Sword are also unnerving. Those faceless guards are always on the lookout for you, and they can end you with one hit. The visual direction and the sound design are the protagonists in those moments. Even though visually we don't have any horrifying image, the way it all comes together during the experience creates this feeling of anxiety. Finally, I want to draw attention to a specific moment in the DLC of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Torna the Golden Country. It's literally one of the final scenes in the game, so skip the video if you never played it. What is that? Caught up with you at last, Laura. How do you know my name? It knows human speech. But it's not a blade. Gort? What happened to you? It hurt! Oh, the pain. What? <laughs> this is probably one of the most disgusting moments in all of Nintendo's history. After some biological experiments by an evil religious group, I love Xenoblade, the character known as Gort ended up like this. He's not a nice person, he's terrible actually, but this is a pretty shocking scene in the game that happens right before the final credits. It's really strange. The DLC is fantastic, by the way. Even though creepy moments are less present in Nintendo games, we still have some of them, and it's a different approach for sure, but it still is fun to see them. Share your favorite creepy moment for Nintendo in the comments, modern or not. And thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, bye! <laughs>